So, uh, speaker of the day, uh, Professor Sarkamun Devastin, Professor Sangeeta Gag, and Dr. Rajkumar Arya, the other organizers. I congratulate the Department of Chemical Engineering for taking this initiative to have a webinar on why a manuscript is rejected. So, there have been a uh, uh, lot of uh, inputs which uh, come from uh, various corners when the uh, when a manuscript is uh, rejected. So, uh, I, I definitely uh, find that this is a very relevant topic and uh, uh, our speaker is a renowned researcher. The, let me uh, introduce the institute uh, to all, uh, all who are connected. This institute came as a uh, Regional Engineering College Jalandhar in 1987 and then now it is an institute of national importance, uh, Government of India uh, uh, Institute, NIT. The institute offers uh, undergraduate uh, programs and uh, it also offers the MTech programs in 15-16 uh, disciplines and PhD in uh, all areas of engineering, uh, sciences and management. We have uh, PhD programs in uh, um, uh, engineering, sciences, and management as well. I would like to share and congratulate the faculty who have more than 450 publications since January this year. Also, the institute has uh, uh, done a good job of uh, acquiring A grading in Hotel Innovation Ranking in the country. During uh, this year, we have filed 27 patents and uh, many more are in pipeline. So definitely the faculty, the students and the staff uh, uh, need to be congratulated for their achievement. I definitely know this uh, particular uh, webinar is going to be very, very useful for all the participants and the topic is quite relevant, mainly uh, the manuscript can be rejected if it doesn't uh, uh, qualify the technical screening or it doesn't fall in the aims and uh, scope of the journal or uh, maybe the article which you want to publish is incomplete, some results are not there or it lacks the uh, sufficient knowledge of procedure, analysis of data which is uh, uh, not clear from your man manuscripts. Also, at times, it can be rejected due to uh, not having uh, properly concluded the uh, research which has been done. And then, uh, different uh, one one major uh, reason can be that uh, it is uh, just an extension of some other publication and there is not uh, sufficient addition into that uh, already published matter. So these are some of my inputs on uh, why a paper or a manuscript can be rejected. I can get it. I'm thankful to the professor who spared his time and will be speaking on this very relevant topic. Thank you. Jai Hind. Jai Bharat. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank, you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for your words of wisdom. So, uh, dear participants, uh, before we begin today's webinar, let me first introduce you all to the expert of today's webinar, Professor Sakamon Devastin. Uh, Dr. S uh, Devastin is presently working as professor at Department of Food, Food Engineering, King Mongus University of Technology, Thonburi, Thailand. He is also associated as a high profile international expert in the School of Food Science and Technology, Zhengdang University, China. Professor Devastin has a brilliant academic track, having completed his PhD in Chemical Engineering from McGraw University, Canada in the year 2001. Earlier, he pursued M Engineering from McGraw University, Canada. He completed his B Engineering from Cassette Sart University, Thailand. He is serving as the editor of Drawing Technology and International Journal, as well as the editor of Commerce Research and Development Journal, 
Professor Devastin is also part of editorial board of Technical Services, UWM Poland, and International Journal of Food Engineering. Dr. Devastin has more than 200 two referred paper publications. He had presented papers in more than 102 international conference presentations and proceedings. He has five books and more than 17 book chapters to his credit. Professor Devastin has several awards to his credit, the latest in 2019 when he was awarded the 26th Thailand Tourist Science and Technology Award by Thailand Tourist Science Foundation. I am happy to share that Professor Devastin is listed in leading engineers of the world, International Biographical Center, Cambridge, UK in the year 2007, the American Biological Institute, Raleigh, USA, listed him as a great minds of 21st century in the year 2006. He is listed in the BAEF, uh, who is who of the emerging leaders and who is who in the world, who is who in Asia by Marcus, who is who New Providence, USA in the year 2006. He is an associate fellow in the Academy of Science, the Royal Society of Thailand, as well as scientific advisor, International Foundation for Science, Sweden. He had given seminars and courses as expert at various universities and government laboratories in Thailand, Cambodia, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Taiwan, Germany, Canada, India, among others. Professor Devastin also reviews papers for, for several international journals like AICHE journals, biochemical engineering journals, bioresource technology, biosystem engineering, among others. He also serves as a consultant for various multinational companies in Asia and Europe. This only improves what I shared about Professor Devastin. He has a lot more to his credit. May I now invite Professor Sakamon Devastin to conduct the webinar on the most awaited topic, why a manuscript is rejected. I'm sure most of us are waiting with the bated breath to hear Professor Devastin. So here is Professor Devastin for the webinar. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, at first, I prepare a shorter presentation. Uh, entitled why the manuscript is rejected but then uh, i received your questions this morning so i decided to expand it a little bit you know, so so to give some more information uh, can can you see the powerpoint now yes sir yes sir it's yeah, it's yeah. here yeah we can yeah, see it's now. Here. Yeah, yeah. yes sir yeah, yes sir it's okay now right it's okay now right yes right, sir. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay Okay, yes. so uh, at first uh, I I decided to to talk only about the uh, information on why a manuscript is rejected, but then I, I received uh, a number of questions from Professor Araya this morning, so I decided to give more information on how to prepare the manuscript, just like uh, the director the the director sir just mentioned. There, there are many important elements uh, to, to a good manuscript, and I, I'll try to cover some of the information here today. So, as you, as you know, research is a look for new knowledge, okay? Probably why it is called research, because you have to search again and again. Uh, and when we talk about knowledge, it is not equal to information. Knowledge is not the same as information. And I, I have to tell you that many, many manuscripts are rejected because you do not inject the element of new knowledge into the manuscript. You, you just list the information, okay? Uh, Sometimes uh, people do a lot of experiments. They report experimental data, but they fail to include the new knowledge. They, they fail to do a comprehensive analysis of the results. So the information is, is nothing. I mean, uh, when, when reviewer or when the editor uh, look at 
this kind of information uh, and they don't see any uh, detailed analysis, critical analysis, they will not view it as useful and they will reject the paper. They will reject the manuscript. So what you have to do is you have to understand the difference between the knowledge and, and information first. Uh, you get experimental data, you just report them. This is not enough. This is not knowledge. You have to come up with something new and you, you have to highlight that in your manuscript. Uh, for example, it, let's say if, if I, I dry something, I, I work on drying, I work on drying of fruits and vegetables. So if I dry uh, a lot of fruits in the past, for example, I dry mango, I dry banana, I dry papaya, I dry uh, orange, and uh, the, the knowledge that I have in the past is that if I increase uh, the drying temperature, the drying time will be shorter, will be, uh, the drying time will decrease by whatever percentage, doesn't matter. Now, in this new submission, I report uh, drying of uh, another fruit, uh, maybe uh, pineapple, for example. And then uh, I said that, okay, I change the temperature, I increase the temperature from 60 to 80 degrees Celsius, and then I report uh, the time saving for, of 20%. Of and then I said that uh, this 20% is new because in the past, I, I report 10 or 80% or 15%, I never report 20% before. This is not core knowledge, okay? This is just an information, just a piece of information. And if you write a paper like this, the chance of being rejected is very high, almost 100%, because you do not present any new knowledge, you just give information. So, so this is something very important. You cannot just repeat what other people do or, or what other people report in the past, and then you expect to, uh, to publish that kind of thing. People will not take it. You, you have to, in addition to new number, in addition to new data, you have to have new knowledge, new insight, new perspective, new interpretation as well, not, or not only new data, okay? Uh, and before I move on, uh, just a question. I, uh, so many asked questions, so many asked me this question, do we have to publish paper? We, we got a number, uh, why we have to publish, publish them. Can we just give the number to industrial people and they, they use it, it should be enough? Well, uh, the objectives of publication is to disseminate knowledge. Again, not only information. Why, why have to do that? Because we want to avoid reinventing the wheel because we don't want people to repeat what we have done. We, we don't want to waste uh, human and the resources uh, by, by doing something again and again. So we want to tell people, okay, this is what we have done, this is what we have got, so people will not have to repeat the, the work again, okay? And now, the degree of originality and depth required for each uh, work depend on the medium you select, uh, you select for dissemination. Of course, to a conference, your paper may not have to be that uh, comprehensive. You know? You don't need uh, something very critical. But if you want to publish in a good journal, of course, the degree of originality has to be high. You, you need a, a very comprehensive and very critical analysis of the data, of the results. So it depends, OK? Another reason for publishing uh, papers is that you, you can bring recognition to uh, yourself, to your institution, your employer. Uh, it of course depends on the quality of your research and presentation. If you have good paper, you have good articles in good journal, your institution and of course yourself will be will be viewed as high quality institute or high quality person, high quality researcher. On the other hand, if you keep publishing uh, low quality work, uh, people will view your institution as uh, mediocre. Uh, you yourself will be viewed as mediocre, so it's not good to publish uh, mediocre paper, of course. Uh, 
as I mentioned, uh, what you what you what you should present or what you publish should only be new. Okay, you should present only something new, something innovative, and something true. Okay, this is very important. Please do not exaggerate claim and do not claim other people work as your own work. Okay, so you have to give appropriate credit to other people work. You give uh, suitable references, a citation to other people work. So uh, people know that, okay, this is something you refer to other people or this is something of your own uh, original. And, and, and you have to remember that knowledge is dynamic, okay? So what you can publish two, two, three years ago may not be publishable today. So you cannot say that, okay, I used to publish a paper like this. I used to report the result like this and journal published the work like that for me five years ago, two years ago. What happened today? Why they don't publish this kind of work anymore? This is very, this is very obvious, you know, because uh, if you have already published this kind of work five years ago, two years ago, that means uh, the work is not new anymore. And uh, if the work is not new today, the journal is, is certainly not uh, consider it anymore. So you have to keep in mind that knowledge is dynamic. So you have to be aware of the state of the art and you have to uh, check the literature very, very regularly. So you make sure that you do not repeat the uh, the previous work, uh, and you do not uh, just you know make marginal or very small uh, improvement on on the previous work. You have to make a significant uh, uh, new knowledge to 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 be able to publish a new a new piece of work. Uh, okay, let, let me just skip it. So, so uh, in, a, in a paper, in a typical manuscript, what kind of uh, component you have to worry about? Of course, title. I will not go into the, uh, how you, you should buy a title. The title uh, shouldn't be too narrow. It shouldn't be too broad because uh, people will not uh, have any idea what you want to cover in your paper if you make the title too broad let's say uh, heterogeneous catalysis is too broad you, uh, yeah. so i i I'll, uh, i just mentioned uh, that uh, the title shouldn't be too too narrow and shouldn't be too broad otherwise people will not have any idea what uh, you want to include in your paper uh, uh, author affiliation I, I think we can skip this uh, i'll just talk a little bit uh, how to write a good abstract uh, in in a good abstract there should uh, be sir, sorry to interrupt uh, to interrupt uh, author and affiliation uh, sir uh, is that an important uh, component uh, because actually uh, uh, can we complete the professor and then we can ask the question answers pardon me uh, I am just asking the participant, please ask the question and answers once he finishes his talk. Actually. Let him complete first. Okay. So, your professor, continue. Yeah. Uh, so, so, in the abstract, you actually you have to include three things. Okay. You have to give some motivation for the study, and you should mention what had happened what had been done over which ranges okay you measure something and over which range or which technique that you use for example you should mention that and then you you finally uh, add the finding the key finding or the key results of your work okay don't, don't forget that this is not a conclusion section so you don't have to say okay what can you do with the result of the work or how your work is so important to industry, blah, blah, blah. You just mention only these three things, okay? Just keep some motivation why your work is important, why you uh, should, should uh, at all study this kind of uh, problem, and then uh, what had been done. Uh, sir, can, can you please? Uh, and the key can results. Can you change the view of your slide show? Kindly the slide is on. The slide is on. I... Slide is visible actually. Slide is fine. Yes, sir. The slide is visible now. 
Yeah, yeah continue, yeah. Professor. Okay. And uh, right now, many journals limit the number of abstract. Uh, I mean, the number of works in the abstract to maybe 150 or 180. So you have to think very carefully what to include. Okay, you cannot write so many things because you you are uh, limited to maybe uh, 150 words or maximum 200 words for some journals. But but you have to make sure that all these three elements are in in your abstract. And don't forget that, uh, especially for good journal, in one day, editor receive 10 paper or maybe 20 papers uh, as new submission. So editor, so, so editor have no time to, to read the whole thing. Editor may, may not have time to read the whole paper. Editor will, will read only the abstract. So if your abstract is not interesting, the uh, editor will simply reject your paper. So this is something very important. This is the like uh, the first step, first uh, just like the first point where you can showcase your work. If you don't write a good abstract, if you cannot present a, a good abstract to the editor, your your paper will likely be rejected. Yeah, because as I said, uh, editor have no time to read everything. They just read the abstract. So you have to be sure that uh, your abstract is interesting. Okay, you have to highlight the new knowledge, new uh, perspective, or the element of innovation in the abstract. This is something very important. Okay. Uh, uh, after the abstract, you you have to go to introduction. And the introduction is just more or less like an expanded version of the abstract. You in, in the first part of the introduction, you can mention uh, why your work is important, why the problem at hand is important. And then uh, in the second part of the abstract, or uh, I'm sorry, in the second part of introduction, then you, you can mention what had been done in the past. Okay, you, you give some uh, literature review, you mention the previous work, you, you mention the previous study, and then you have to highlight what is missing. Okay, you cannot just say that, okay, Mr. A is doing something like that, Mr. B is doing something like this, and then you just stop there. You have to, you have to highlight what is missing, uh, what is the knowledge gap that you want to fill in the present manuscript. Otherwise, people will not know why you, you, you wanted to, to uh, work on this uh, problem or why should they, they, why should they read another paper. But if you mention what kind of uh, knowledge that is missing, uh, what kind of knowledge gap that is uh, to be filled, then people will understand why they, they will need another another uh, paper. And then uh, if and then uh, if the work is involving uh, experimental. Uh, and, and, I'm sorry. And uh, if if your manuscript involve the involve some experiment, then you you need a section called materials and method. Okay, material and method uh, may include a subsection on experimental setup. In this case, uh, you you have to describe how your equipment, how your experiment setup is is uh, is all about. Uh, if you use only the equipment that you acquire from a company, let's say you use a gas chromatograph or use a rheometer, or if you use the open, then you don't have to give any detail. You just give the brand, you just give the model and the make uh, and the manufacturing address of the equipment. Uh, but if you uh, build your own equipment, if you build your own thing, you decide uh, a new equipment, you decide a new uh, apparatus, then you keep detail, okay? So so this depends. I mean, if you use just the equipment that is available off the shelf, then you don't have to give any detail. But if you uh, build your own setup, then you have to give detail, okay? Uh, in terms of materials, uh, you, you have to describe uh, your test materials or chemical, okay? Uh, you obtain chemical from company, you just keep the name of the company. You get the chemical from Merck, you get chemical from uh, Sigma, then you, you describe the, uh, 
the source of chemical. Okay, experimental procedure, you can, you can uh, divide the experimental procedure into subsection, and then you explain how you did the experiment step by step, okay? You have to give detail, you have to give enough detail that people who want to repeat your work can, can really repeat your work. They just, uh, if they read the, the explanation, they can repeat all the experiments. Here, for example, this, this is a setup that, that we build ourselves. That's why we have to give some explanation. Uh, and then uh, you, you give a setup like this, you give a schematic diagram like this, and then you, you, can, you, know, put, you can add some number, and then you can put the uh, explanation of each part in the, in the figure caption, something like that, and then you explain, okay? But uh, again, if you do not build your own uh, equipment, you don't have to give the picture like this, not necessary. If you have computational work or simulation work, then you have to keep sufficient detail also to, to reproduce the work. Okay, you have to state the, all the assumption that you use to develop your model. You have to keep all the model equation. You have to keep uh, initial condition, boundary condition that you use to solve the equation. You have to also validate the model because whenever you propose to use the model, then you have to validate the model. Otherwise, people will not uh, be convinced that your model is, uh, is working. Okay, so numerical result must be tested to ensure correctness. You have to compare your uh, simulated result with uh, experimental work, for example, or you have to compare your numerical result with an earlier work just to show that your model is, is fine. Okay, and don't forget to point out weaknesses along with merits of the model. Uh, by definition, no model is perfect. It depends on uh, how good your assumption is. Uh, you, can, you can make assumption, but then you have to justify your assumption. And if your model is not 100%, perfect, that is fine. You, you just explain why the model is not perfect, okay? And you have to make sure that all the spelling, all the grammar, or the format is fine. Because uh, sometimes people didn't put uh, enough uh, effort into writing, and people, a lot of people, especially reviewers and editors, may misinterpret that as sloppiness in research, which is not good anyway. Okay. Uh, now, uh, for conclusion, uh, there are two important things that you have to include in your conclusion. Okay. Uh, you should say exactly what you did in your work. So you say what had been done, and then you give key finding of the work. In this case, you can you can give some explanation why you obtain uh, such and such uh, results. Okay, you don't have to limit yourself uh, to uh, uh, hundred words like in the abstract. So you have more space to explain uh, why you obtain uh, so and so results. And don't forget to highlight the new thing. Don't forget to highlight the innovation that you have got in, in the work because this is also important. And then you can also give recommendation on how to use the result or you can give recommendation on uh, possible future work that you should, uh, you should conduct. So this is a conclusion, okay? Of course, you can give acknowledgement. You, you thank the funding agency or you thank people who, who help uh, you to, to finish the work. All right. Now, uh, I, I want to mention also a little bit why your manuscript is rejected. Okay. Uh, in many cases, you submit uh, a, pa a paper to a journal. The journal doesn't even consider your your manuscript at all so they reject it like that okay they they don't even send your manuscript out for review why is that this is uh, something uh, yeah. actually i i have to say that rejection can happen at all stages along the publication process okay uh, nowadays as i mentioned each journal especially uh, a good journal in uh, Quarter, uh, first quartile, second quartile of uh, Web of Sci uh, received 
so many submission in a day. So editor have no choice but to reject up to I would say sixty or seventy percent of of all the submission. So only uh, thirty or forty percent of the submission will go to reviewers. Okay, so rejection can happen at preliminary screening step, and as I said, up to sixty to seventy percent of submission will be rejected at this step. Okay. Uh, rejection can, can take place after peer review. That means uh, you, you have already passed the first preliminary screening step, and then you have, uh, oh, I would say, you lucky enough that your uh, paper uh, was sent out to reviewers. But then reviewers say that they don't like your paper, they reject the paper. Okay, so this is rejection after peer review. Now, if you a little bit luckier, that means uh, you get the, the comments back from the reviewers, and the reviewer asks you to revise the paper. So you, you revise the paper, you resubmit it to the journal, the journal send the revised manuscript or revised paper to the reviewer for another round of review. And if, if the reviewer do not believe that your revised manuscript is good enough, they may reject your paper even after revision. So you can you can see that even if you have a chance, have got a chance to revise your paper, it doesn't mean that your paper will be uh, accepted, it can be rejected. Okay? So so nothing for certain at, until you get the final accepted letter. Now, what I look at during the preliminary screening, okay, the, the first step, preliminary screening step, uh, the editor will look at three things, okay? They will look at the title. If the title is not catchy, okay, if the title is not interesting, chances are that the, the paper will be rejected, okay? You will say that, hey, title, why, uh, why they put the uh, too much emphasis on title. Well, just if you, you make the title not interesting, you know, reader will not uh, will not like to read it because people this day like something catchy. So if you cannot make the title interesting, if you cannot make the title attractive, people people will not, uh, will not want to read your paper. Editor is the same. The same thing happened with the editor. If you not make the title interesting, or if the editor feel that okay, this kind of thing, they have seen so many of that, and they don't want to have another paper in the same area anymore. Your paper may, may likely be rejected. Okay, so title has to be interesting. If the title is interesting, the editor will look at the abstract. And as I said, if you you cannot write a good abstract, if you have an abstract that is not interesting, if you have a, a very plain abstract with no element of information, or you do not highlight uh, new thing, or new idea, or new perspective, or new point of view in your abstract, your paper will be rejected. Okay? So you have to make sure that abstract is, is well written and contain the element that I, I mentioned earlier. Now, if the abstract is good, if the title is good, if the abstract is good, the editor may, may have a quick scan through the rest of the paper and if they find that, okay, it looks good, it looks fine, then they'll send it out for review, okay? So this is the first step. Uh, and And Normally, there are three reasons why the manuscript is rejected after the very beginning step. Uh, the first reason is that the manuscript may be out of scope. Okay, uh, drawing technology, for example, received so many papers that are not related to drawing at all. You may you may say that why? I mean, uh, if someone has paper. Not drawing, they should bother submit it to drawing technology. I don't know, uh, but, but this is something that happens almost every day. We got paper on extraction, we got paper on something, 
not related to drying at all. In this case, the paper, the paper will be rejected, okay? Another important reason is that uh, the manuscript is just reinventing the wheel. That means you need the, the same old knowledge. If the information is itself, the number itself may be different, but the knowledge is the same, okay? So you do not advance the knowledge in the field. In this case, the manuscript will be rejected. Okay? You report only a different number, but when the editor look at it, same information, uh, I'm sorry, same knowledge, same conclusion, okay? For example, you, you report that you use the drying temperature, the drying time is shorter. This kind of thing is the same. It's the same. It has been like that for, forever. So this kind of manuscript will be rejected, okay? And another reason is, uh, is that the, the editor may detect possible plagiarism. That means uh, it's likely that you, you cite some work and then you fail to get proper references or you copy it, uh, you copy a part of the work from someone. This is common. And uh, if this kind of thing happens, the manuscript will be so before you submit the work out, you may consider using the plagiarism detection software. For example, you can use it to screen uh, your paper, your manuscript, and then you check the overall similarity. If your overall similarity is higher than 25% or even 20%, you should revise your manuscript. Okay, you revise it until the overall similarity is lower than 20 or 25 percent, and then you can submit your manuscript. Okay, this is uh, an example of the uh, of the screening using the software. Here you can see that uh, the overall similarity is about 38 percent. Okay, this is too high and not acceptable. So you have to revise the manuscript and make sure this number is lower than let's say 20 or 25 percent and then you can submit it out and this is 38 percent too high okay uh, another reason uh, why the manuscript is rejected after the carry screen step is that uh, the quality of English writing is not adequate okay. uh, uh, Quality of English writing may be in terms of grammar, in terms of spelling, in terms of coherence, and also in terms of logical flow of information. Sometimes the logical flow of information is not good at all, so you jump from one place to another. Okay, and the editor will feel that okay, this is not a, a good manuscript to consider. They reject the paper. Uh, sometimes even they reject paper even. Only, even only because the, the format, the required format, is not satisfied. Uh, for example, uh, in the reference format, uh, line or page number is missing. You have to really work. Uh, you you execute the, the powerful number of words for a particular journal. Uh, some journal nowadays give the maximum allowable number of words, like. 5,000 words, 7,000 words, it's just uh, an allowable number of words that the manuscript will be rejected. Okay. Now, if you, if you have passed to the peer review step and the manuscript is rejected, there are many possible reasons. One of the reasons is that uh, your experimental design may be too poor. Okay. You, you did apply appropriate steps analysis the result or something like that okay. or or you may use outdated or in appropriate experimental features uh, your, uh, your essay may be too old uh, people uh, uh, method five years ago and you're still using it uh, as a problem okay. Or if you study, for example, uh, if you measure antioxidant activity, for example, and you use only one assay, now a uh, good journal will not uh, consider that as, as adequate. They will okay, so you have to use at least two assays, for example. Uh, 
or your presentation of the result may not be good enough, or you may not have a critical analysis of the results. As I mentioned, uh, just only listing the result is not adequate. You have to critically or comprehensively analyze the result, come up with new knowledge, okay, not information, not only information. Uh, when you when you do simulation work, you may not uh, you you may forget to, may forget to, to give it uh, I'm sorry, you may forget to give appropriate assumptions. Okay? Sometimes may not be amplified. You may forget to give equation uh, in full. You may forget to give initial condition. You may forget to give boundary condition. You didn't validate the model. Get to give these are possible reasons why the trip can be rejected after peer reviews. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, before I forget, I, I will I will send this all PowerPoint to Dr. Arya, and uh, if you want this PowerPoint, you can ask for for it from Dr. Arya. Okay. So so you have a PowerPoint that you can. Uh, uh, afterwards. Okay. Now, if you if you give a chance to revise your paper, and then you revise the paper, you submit it back to the journal, review, look at it again, and then they reject the paper. Why? What happened? Well, one of the reasons is that comments, review comments, are not followed without giving rebuttal. You, you don't have to agree with all the comments, but you have to do battles on points that you do not agree, okay? Uh, I mean, if, if you can follow all the comments, that is the best, that certainly would be the best way to, to revise the manuscript. But if you do not agree with some of the comments, you have to explain why you do not agree with the comments. That is called rebuttal. And if you do not follow all the comments, you do not respond fully to all the comments without giving rebuttals, chances are that your manuscript is rejected or revision are not satisfactory. Another reason is that the requested information is not in the requirement. How you explain uh, why you do not agree or why you not uh, believe that the comment is uh, uh, explained only in the reply, but you do not incorporate that kind of explanation in the review. You may not feel that uh, this is adequate and they, they, they may want to uh, ask for another revision that is possible. Or, or revision are not very highlighted my manuscript and review cannot find the explanation and they get upset, they are not happy, they may even reject your, your manuscript, my manuscript. Okay. So whenever you, you make the revision of your manuscript, you have to make sure that you use different color font your in your manuscript. You use red font for example to get the revision, not the, use the black font as, as in the original version of the manuscript. So that you have changed, you make it in red, okay? And, uh, you will can see clearly what kind of change you have made. Another reason, another possible reason is that original reviewer does not agree with the requirement. You have to invite another uh, reviewer. When the new reviewer read your manuscript, they may not like it, and they reject also possible. Okay. This does not happen quite often, but it can happen, and this is possible. Okay. Or nobody knows why the manuscript is rejected. It is like that. So only God knows why. Nobody knows. Okay. So these are all the reasons why the manuscript is rejected. And uh, that's it. I mean, uh, we have limited time today, so I think I'll stop here. And if you have some question, I, I will try to answer them. Yeah, um, sir, excuse me. Uh, I have a question. May I please? Yes. Uh, sir, I have a question. May I please? 
Yeah, yeah, sure. You, you okay, thank ahead. you very much, organizers, sir, for allowing me. Uh, so this is Shami, my commonwealth scholar, graduate learner of the School of Economics. Right now, working as a research scholar, uh, visiting position in Metropolitan University. Uh, by the way, sir, my question uh, to the honorable, uh, I mean, research person, sir, is that, sir, I mean, author's affiliation to some particular institution uh, does play a vital role to get published in a very good journal? Because, uh, let me elaborate just a couple of seconds, because one of my cousin, after completing, I mean, his PhD, from London School of Economics. Right now, he actually, he's working in a college uh, in Chandigarh. So, uh, I mean, uh, when he was uh, I mean, in LSC, his work was, uh, I mean, getting published quite easily. But after getting back to India, I mean, he, I mean, she's actually really facing some difficulty. It, it's actually taking much longer time for her uh, to get the response from the journal. Uh, so, uh, the author's affiliation, so does that play some role? Thank you very much, sir. That is the, a very difficult problem, I have to tell. Uh, we, we face the same problem, you know. We submit paper from Thailand, for example. It takes so long <laughs> and uh, very difficult to get published. That is a typical, I, I would say, a classical problem. And I, I don't know what to do. I, I, I have no, no suggestion to give you, but that's a problem, yeah, sir. It's a problem. Yeah. You may have to find that classical a, problem. So that classical, classical problem has no neoclassical solution. Please. Yeah. <laughs> well, what 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 the possible solution is that you have to find a co-author who work in uh, you know Western University. I mean uh, in in uh, UK in US Australia. I don't know. Yeah. Sir. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes, yes. Uh, sir, why, why do the journals uh, mostly prefer single blind review process? Why not uh, double blind review process? I think the earlier question uh, can be answered in this way. If there is a, a process of double blind process, in that case, affiliation, I think, doesn't matter. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But, uh, you know, uh, again, it, it comes back to the classical thing, you know, people want to know where the paper came from because, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to say, but if, if, if they feel that they don't like you, they don't like the institution, they read the paper. But this is completely unethical, Professor. Of course, then, of course, yeah. of course. This is, of course, unethical. And, and uh, I mean, uh, we at Dry Technology, we will not, we not do that. We we, we, we treat other people fairly. But, I have to admit that this is something that happened, you know. And I, I say that it's good. It's very bad, actually. But this is something that happened. And it happened to me also because I, I you know, I, I, I want to share you uh, one case. Um, we submit a paper, a whole paper, to a journal, okay? A very famous journal. And it was rejected. And then uh, after a while, uh, we worked with another British professor, and then we made very minor changes to that manuscript, and we resubmitted again to the journal with that British professor as an author, and the manuscript is accepted. And I have to say that uh, the addition or the revision is very minor, you know. Uh, uh, professor, I also have one question because sometimes a uh, manuscript is being sent for four or five uh, reviewers. Yes. Out of four or five, if four accepted it and one say no, even if that is being the rejected, why is it so actually? The majority need to be considered at least. Sir, this is, this is all depend on, on the editor. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you see, uh, right now, right now, top journals are under pressure by the publisher to reduce the number of pages. So, some journal like Chemical Engineering Time, for example, if let's say you have three reviewers, okay, and one reviewer say no, other say yes, yes, right? but then the editor will say no. So this kind of thing, I mean. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it happened. Yeah. 
so we should have one actually editors conclave type of thing so that we can come with uh, common consensus in that way <laughs> yeah, i don't know I mean, this i i do not have any, any good solution to offer to you i'm sorry yeah yeah Yeah. Hello, uh, sir. Another request, please. It's Hello. not a question, actually. This is Shami Megan, uh, uh, sir. Uh, I mean, we are so lucky to have you in our midst. It was really a very resourceful presentation from you, uh, but the time was very limited. That's why, yes. sir, would you please be kind to provide us uh, some good books, reference, or uh, some uh, reference material, so that we can go through them and we can learn more about how to write. some really excellent i mean uh, article or research paper uh, for some good journal and uh, oh. if you please be kind to me i will definitely email you would you please be kind to me so that i can be in your touch please thank you very much uh, I, i'll keep the uh, I, i think dr arya has my email address so you can ask for my address and uh, i can write to you on Uh, hello sir good afternoon i have a question am i audible yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, this is dr jha from uh, iit dhanbad sir i have a question does this uh, acceptance rejection and other things depend upon the political relationship between two countries because last month only i kind of uh, communicated a paper to a journal uh, which belongs to china yeah and two hours time they kind of uh, uh, rejected is saying that uh, you have a good work you can uh, communicate in other journal so by that time i was not aware that uh, this, this belongs to china and this time as per the relationship between china and india political relationship between china and india is very kind of uh, high so, does these things depend upon the political relationship between the two countries so that you know the rejection rate is higher or lower kind of thing uh friend yes Be honest. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Be honest. I would have to say yes. Yes. Yeah. Sir, you are saying yes. Yeah. Okay. 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 So in that way, we should not come I mean, to uh, the journals which. Well, it should not happen, right? Uh, theoretically, it should not happen, but it does happen. Yeah. Okay. Any other question from any participant? Because the I mean, because the professor have the another meeting at three thirty, I think. Right? Yeah. Sir. All right. Ah, uh, sir. One yeah. thing. I, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Sir, one yeah. thing yeah. I want to ask. I yeah, I send a one let uh, one uh, manuscript for publication from uh, the international country, but uh, that response I couldn't get for one year. Next time. Uh, then I send it to another uh, international uh, journal. Then I get uh, got that uh, information that you are you have been accepted. Your manuscript is accepted. Later on, when this accepted, then I, the, the same publication, the same was done with the first one I uh, send. So which one will be uh, acceptable or public fraud for twenty or more? I'm sorry, I don't hear you well. But uh, no, no, I, the question is the professor. She has submitted a paper one year back. Uh -huh. They have not the answered anything. Yes. Later on, she has the submitted after one year to the some some another journal. Yes. And the luckily she got acceptance from both the places. So what oh. should she do? That is not that is not acceptable actually. What you should what you should have done. is that before you submit to another journal you should write the first journal that you want to be uh, you want to withdraw okay that is great from from the first journal before you submit it to the second journal okay okay sir yeah sir, good afternoon yes sir, this is ram kumar from nit jalandhar sir i have a question that if i think that the viewer had made a mistake in reviewing And yeah. I have a good argument, sir. I have a question. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not audible, but uh, I can speak briefly. Yeah. Sir, Go my ahead. question is: 
My question is, if I think that reviewer made a mistake to yes. review, and yeah. I have a good argument to prove it, yeah. then can I ask the reviewer to reconsider the decision? Of course, of course, you can do that, yeah. Okay, sir. Sir, one more, one more question. Yeah. How to deal with contradictory review? Well, uh, it should be the editor who make the decision. Sorry. Editor will take the decision actually. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hello, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Madhu. Yeah, I'm Madhu. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Yes, yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Sir. Yeah, sir, most of my journals are speaking about the grammatical mistakes. So yes. in what aspect we have to check that before uploading or which software we need to check with that grammatically so that if the paper is nice or in what manner we need to check that the paper is in a proper way grammatical errors yes. grammatical uh, errors yeah, yeah. actually uh, there is software called uh, there is a software called Grammarly that you can use yeah 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 well, otherwise you have my is to do it for you. There are so many, there are so many uh, services now. Now, okay. you see now. Okay. Okay. You want to ask something? I think. Yes, sir. I want to ask one question. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it happens when I send my paper to review. Yes. Most of the times I got a comment to add some paper of reviews as a uh, reference. They yes. want to cite their paper into my manuscript when yes. it is nowhere related to my article. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So most of the time, I mean, this thing happens to me. Yes, yes, it happened. Yeah. So uh, if you can, I mean, if you can try, if you can find a way to do it, just do it. When most of the time, it's my paper is not even related to their article. Then how I mean, can I if, cite it? Well, not really. Related, you have to say it's not related, and then you 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 try to cite some of them. I mean, uh, let's say they suggest ten of them, maybe you can, you can cite three or four of them. I don't know. Yeah. Because most of the timings, by fearing of rejecting, we used to opt this option that it's better to cite anywhere rather than get rejected. Mm, so yeah. you got the answer. I think the I mean the any other participant want to ask. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I can have one more question. I'm so sorry yeah, about that. We can tell. Uh, we can take only one or two questions. That's all, right? Right, Professor. Good afternoon, sir. I'm, yes. Yeah, sir, I'm, I'm audible. Hello. Hello. Yes. Am sorry, I audible? You can start. Yes. 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 I have a question, sir. Uh, what is the general procedure of retracting a paper from a journal? Uh, retracting a journal again, uh, uh, back from I mean, the paper back from the journal. The retracting a published paper from a journal. A rejection rate. No, no. Retracting a published paper from a journal. Actually. Uh, 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 retracting. Yeah. So, what is the procedure for that? Oh, retract. I mean, retraction and withdrawal is not the same. Yeah, yeah. Withdraw the right. publication or, after the right. publication. What I mean, uh, yeah. Who? What I'm trying to say is that retraction and withdrawal is two different things, right? Retraction is done by the journal. Withdrawal is done by the author. So, so which? Which uh, which one uh, you you uh, asking? So retraction in uh, the, the journal files a problem. The journal no, files no, a problem. Actually, uh, I actually, mean, I think there's some question. No, no. Actually, uh, Dr. Barman, can you ask the question again? I want to ask that uh, after publishing the paper, what is the procedure? 
of retracting that paper or if we want to withdraw a published no, but paper. No, the professor question is that uh, what why the problem came? The problem is from the editor side or problem in the why do you want to the uh, withdraw that? That's what we want to ask us. Uh, sir, that is maybe uh, due to some co conflict uh, in authorship. Then you have to write to the journal. You have to write to the journal. You have to explain the, to the editor what happened, and then you ask for the follow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think one yeah. more, the last question only, and then we have to close the session because the professor have the another meeting actually. Just one last question. Good afternoon, sir. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Yes. Sir, good afternoon, sir. Sir, good afternoon. Am I audible? Just one person only. Sir, good afternoon. Yeah, yeah, we can hear. Let's continue. Sir, good afternoon. Am I audible? Uh, yes. I have one issue. Yes, thank you. So I am Mutu. Uh, actually, uh, I have come to uh, avoid the plagiarism. Uh, uh, I cannot hear you. In the reference board, sir. How to avoid the plagiarism in reference board? How to avoid right. plagiarism? Plagiarism. Hmm. Right. So usually, uh, the, in plagiarism, uh, is that the question? The reference board. So how <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear you. So I think the professor, uh, because he wants to say the how to the rectify plagiarism of a paper actually. What, what was the question again? How to avoid materialism or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How to avoid it. Okay. Uh, first of all, you have to make sure that you cite the, the, the reference properly. If you get some data, get some uh, statement, if you get some information from a source, you have to make sure that you buy a source. And not only citing the source, you have to paraphrase, but you have to reformulate what you have got from the original reference before you citing the manuscript. Oh, I'm sorry, before you citing that reference. Okay? So paraphrase, uh, in other words, you write the, the Information you write sentences and then you reference. Okay, that is plagiarism. And then you use the software to check for possible plagiarism and, and make sure that the overall similarity is not higher than the allowable number. Yeah. Uh, all right, professor. I think uh, you are getting late for the, I mean, the another meeting, right? Yes. So, yes. Uh, dear participant, we are the sorry. Actually, we have to means close the session immediately here because he had the, the another meeting. So, I would like uh, uh, now thank to our means honorable director, sir, HOD ma'am, faculty members, most importantly the lively participants. Most importantly, I would like to thank our esteemed speaker for the afternoon, Professor Sakaman Devastin, for sharing his valuable inputs about writing manuscripts, its problems and solutions. It was indeed a pleasure that we had Professor Devastin to share his valuable inputs on writing proper manuscripts and eliminate the chances of rejection. Thank you, sir, for sharing your valuable time and enlightening us on the crucial topics of importance. We hope to have you on board in near future as well. Now, I would uh, request all participants to fill in the feedback form and send it to me at the earliest so that we can generate the certificate of the participations. We hope that webinar was a fruitful one. We wish to conduct few more in interesting sessions in the coming weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
Thank you, Professor. And uh, actually, due to some technical thing, a uh, lot of participants could not participate. And uh, uh, if you permit, we can share this uh, audio, the recording through YouTube, if you permit. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the PowerPoint, OK? okay. And then you okay. can share with the participant who want to have it. Okay, Professor, thank you very much. Right. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Have a great day.